All right, guys. So today we are going to be testing the Chore Warrior electric wheelbarrow. This thing has uh, knobby tires. I just realized that I needed to put on actual shoes for this video. That's how you know it's going to be serious. So anyway, this is an electric wheelbarrow. It has a battery pack. It has an electric motor. It's got knobby tires. It has over here. It's got a throttle. And the idea is for it to just be, obviously, as you would expect, a self-powered wheelbarrow. You just pick it up, move the throttle, and it does all the work for you. So you don't have to push it around. And of course, we will be comparing that to just your classic old regular wheelbarrow. And this, the max weight capacity for this is 350 pounds. So for our weight, we'll be using bags of sand because, well, quite frankly, your mom was busy. First thing, let's move this out of the way. So in this wheelbarrow, I already have 350 pounds, so let's just maybe walk around the yard one time with that and get an idea of what that feels like. Ugh. Okay. 350 pounds in a wheelbarrow? That's actually not that bad, to be honest. It actually moves, it actually moves quite easily. This, this is honestly way easier than I expected. So, oh, we hit a bump. So the electric wheelbarrow, if this is this easy, now keep in, keep in mind this is flat ground, but if this is this easy, the electric one should be like an absolute breeze. Although I can see where this would, if I did, I mean, this is pretty easy now. If I did this all day, oh, we're stuck on a little hill. If I did this all day, I can see where this would be exhausting. Let's move this over here. 150 in here. So I'm just gonna move move some over there. All right, we got 350 pounds in the wheelbarrow. We're gonna turn it on. We have a light indicator. We have green, orange, and red. We are on green, so that's good. Oh, wow. That's like, because of the, I assume because of the balance point of this thing, that's like way easier to pick up. That's crazy. Okay, let's just go full throttle. Oh, we are not. <laughs> okay, we're moving. Okay. I feel like we're not moving as fast as we should. Oh, we hit a bump. No problem. Oh no. I can feel, I can feel we're slowing down. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. It literally just quit. Oh. And now I, I see, whenever I look down here at my light indicator, whenever I push the throttle, instead of green, it goes straight to red. So is, are we already out of juice? Okay, well we're going. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go around the yard one more time. This part of the yard is a little bit downhill, so it's doing fine over here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we hit a little bump in the yard. Can we not go, can we not just power over this? Come on. Oh, now we're like, now we're stuck. Oh. oh, okay. I think we're already out of juice. We're not even, we're not even back to where we were, where we died the first time. We're barely, I mean, we are barely creeping. And something, okay, this is something that needs to be discussed. So we're essentially dead. Like if we're on flat ground and slight downhill 
were okay. Now keep in mind, if you looked at my yard, it's you'd say it's flat. But going from there to here, there's like the slightest incline, maybe like one degree maybe of incline, if that. And we're having trouble going up that. That's very disappointing. I noticed a problem that, so whenever I first picked it up, where it's so easy to pick up because of, because of where the balance point is so, so much further back compared to a classic wheelbarrow, whenever the battery starts to die and I go to push it, whenever you try to push it forward, it just wants to, it just wants to like tip over on itself. It doesn't actually want to move like a regular wheelbarrow does unless you get like low and then get like down here and like, I don't know, do some weird stuff. Oh, I also forgot to mention this thing has reverse. <laughs> Which... Okay, the reverse, it almost died there. Okay, this is, uh, this is sad. It's supposed to do 350 pounds. And at 350 pounds, I mean, we went twice around the yard and we're almost completely dead. Let me go around the yard like two more times and see if it'll even like do that. Two more times around the yard. See if we can do it. Oh, looks like we maybe gained a little bit back since we, since we uh, gave it a little bit of a rest. Oh, here's our little, little uneven spot again. bump oh oh we're just barely moving oh we're dead <laughs> okay so this is this is really bad so At 350 pounds, we made it four times around the yard, barely making it over the tiniest, slightest little hump. We're already down to yellow, but like straight to red as soon as we push the throttle down. This is uh, not looking good. I guess if you were to load this thing to 350, say if you were like a contractor or something, it appears that you would only be getting, I mean, how, what was that like? say it was like 30 seconds or a minute per lap, like four minutes, maybe 10 minutes of runtime before it's completely dead. Um, that's pretty sad. All right, so we're gonna try something a little bit different. Recharge the battery to back to full. And then I have reduced the load from 350 to 200. Cause I feel like, I feel like 200 is probably a little bit more of like an average like an average wheelbarrow load. And then I have put a two by four on the ground to simulate like a bump, uh, a curb, uh, just something, just some small obstacle for it to see if it can power itself over. Wow, 200 is <laughs> much lighter. All right, let's see. Really? 200 pounds. You can't power yourself over a two by four that's not even two inches off the ground because a two by four is what like an inch and three quarter oh and i'm noticing as soon as i hit the switch we go straight from green all the way to red maybe if we got a little bit of a run <laughs> it has an open differential so <laughs> i guess it just kind of goes wherever it wants maybe if we get like a good run Okay, now we have reverse, so let's see if we can back over it. Really? 
with 200 pounds, you can't go over a slight bump. <laughs> Jeez, I can't even hardly almost pull it over. <sighs> That's like, let me get the regular wheelbarrow. All right, this is 200 pounds in the regular wheelbarrow. Let's try to back over this. <laughs> That's so much easier. It's literally easier in the, in the regular wheelbarrow. <laughs> this is, uh, this is not what I expected. Let's try to go forwards in the regular wheelbarrow. Okay, that's a little bit, gonna be a little bit tougher, but not terribly tough. Oh. <laughs> oh. So like you need a <laughs> you need a pretty decent run. Well, this kind of ruins all the other tests I was gonna do. Cause I was gonna try to see if maybe we could maybe go up like a little set of ramps or something to simulate maybe trying to like go to the back of a trailer or something. But I don't think it's gonna have the power to do it. I mean, we can try. This is what we'll use as our ramp. <laughs> um, we're going from flat ground, uh, about 10 and a half inches, about 12 inches to the top of this. So <laughs> 12 inches of incline from there to there. I don't think there's any way that it's gonna do it. What do I know? Let's see. Well, if we can even get on the two by fours. <laughs> the motor keeps like locking up. Like right now, I'm full throttle. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. I stand corrected. That was a little bit more impressive than I thought even though it could barely climb over the, the edge of that. Okay, maybe let's step it up a notch. All right, now we've stepped it up a notch. We're gonna be going, instead of 12 inches, going about 19 inches. So, that's a pretty steep incline. Not really, I still think that's lower than like pretty much any trailer that you're gonna be getting onto. I have very low expectations. Got to get our little running start. Oh. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Now I think if I, if I push, I can get it there. But I feel like that's cheating. You know what? Let's try to do it with the, the regular wheelbarrow. Let's go. Mm. That's not easy, but it's not. Oh, Lord. <laughs> not easy, but not bad, to be honest. Actually, after, after doing that one manually, <laughs> kind of makes me feel even worse about the Chore Warrior. It wasn't even that hard, and it just could barely do it, and it needed my help to get up there. All right, so next test we're gonna do, uh, both wheelbarrows have 200 pounds in them, and we're gonna see how much weight it takes to pick up each wheelbarrow to kind of see, like, I guess where the balance point is. For the Chore Warrior. Let's see. <laughs> okay. 32 pounds. So not bad. Like I said, this one is very easy to pick up because of that balance point. So 32. This one, I won't be surprised if it's like double that. 
Okay. So for the regular wheelbarrow, 50, what was it? 55 pounds. So that, uh, that seems about right. Significantly, not, not a lot more difficult, but definitely more difficult than this one. Where this one has that better balance point, whenever the battery starts to die and you try to push on it, it makes it almost impossible. It makes it just want to tip over on you. So there's a, there's good and bad. All right, so now we've covered, we've done all of our tests and you can kind of see what this Troll Warrior is all about. I don't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning, but this thing is $800. For that, there's a lot of things that we need to discuss. Uh, one is battery life. As you saw, the battery life is absolutely atrocious. There's no way that you would get through, like if you were a contractor and if you were hauling, you know, 200 pound uh, loads, if there's any type of an incline, you're done for. Your battery's gonna be dead within like 30 minutes. Probably even less than that, honestly. A huge negative. Second, it doesn't have the power that you think that you would think that it would have. So third, I don't know if this company has like a bunch of middle schoolers who are like putting these things together or not putting these things together because this thing comes in, in a box full of parts and you have to put it all together. I don't know if they have a bunch of middle schoolers who are packing the boxes or what. The quality control of this company is probably some of the worst I've ever seen in my life. As an example of one of the things I'm talking about, here's your handles. The bolt, this is, this is how it's supposed to be, I guess. The, like, there's just so much slack inside of the tubes, okay? So that's, that's one big thing. A smaller thing that's pretty annoying is that this grip, it did a pretty good job of staying on today during the video, but this grip, there's like certain spots where it just like, sometimes it'll grip, sometimes it won't. Whenever I was setting up for the video, there were several times where I was pulling it backwards and the grip just slides right off. Not a huge deal, but very annoying for something that you pay $800 for. Whenever I was assembling this thing, apparently they had two, uh, I, I don't know if this is the old version or the new version, but apparently there's two different versions. They sent me all of the parts in square tube, except for two of the most vital parts they sent to me in round tubing. So whenever I got the thing and I went to put it together, I couldn't even put it together because I had to email them and tell them that they sent me the wrong parts to get the correct part. Do you see how much slop there is here? And then also the fact that nothing can go here. It just does, there's like nothing that you can do. Yeah, I think, they, I think they've sent me a mix match of who knows what because they have zero quality control. I know, here we go again. I got the correct parts this time. Square. Should be good to go. Another thing that happened, it comes with this battery pack. This is two 12 volt batteries wired in series. So yeah, it's a 24 volt system. Another thing that happened was whenever I got all of my uh, boxes and I was getting all the parts situated to figure out, to start putting it together, I, was, I discovered that they never sent me a battery pack. So they didn't send me a battery pack like they were supposed to. They didn't send me the correct supports like they were supposed to, which I will give them credit. The customer service is extremely good. And as soon as I emailed them, the, like the, the next day, a package was in the mail with the correct stuff. I should have never, that should have never been an issue to begin with. I should have never had to email them and tell them to send me something that's supposed to come with it. I shouldn't have had to tell them to send me the correct parts to put it together for $800. All of that stuff should have, it should have been there from the beginning. So those were, those were two big things. Another thing was that whenever I was putting it together, the wheels or the axles have a key in them for the wheels to keep the wheel, to, you know, lock the wheels in place. The keys appear to be like handmade or something or very like a very rough cut or something. And you're supposed to be able to just slide the wheels on and then put the keys in, put the nuts on, and then you're fine. The, one of the keys, I had to file the key down by hand just to even be able to get the wheel on 
it was I had to file probably almost a whole millimeter off of it to be able to get the wheel on, which was a pain. <laughs> Uh, all right, so do I keep filing until it slides on a little easier? Or do I just hammer it on? The electrical, oh, you're not gonna be able to see it, but behind this panel, there's a white uh, connection box and there's two, or there, there's two uh, connections on either side and they have the plug, they have these plugs that you plug in and it has like a ring around it. You uh, screw it in to connect it. Every single one of these, except for one, so three out of four, the ring was ovaled and, it, and I couldn't screw it in. So I had to take a pair of pliers and straighten it out to be able to try to screw it in. And then once I did get the thing straightened out to where I could screw it in, every single connection inside the box was loose. So I had to take the box apart, tighten up the connection, put it back on, then I could make my connections. So that was a huge pain. The nut's loose. Who would have thought? Surely it's not because they don't know how to assemble anything. Oh, this one's loose too. And this one. So yeah, that's, that was just like, that was just some of my experience. Like I said, I don't, I don't like coming on here to, to like trash a company, but obviously they don't know who I am. They don't know that I was, that I bought this to make a video out of. Any average Joe that would have bought, that would have spent 800 of their hard earned dollars on this thing, that's the experience they would have had. That's just not, that's just not, to me, that's not acceptable. I think this thing needs some serious help. And also what I want to say about where, where this one dies so fast, I have a suspicion that either the battery pack they sent me is one of the batteries is bad or the motor is bad or a third option is that this thing just sucks so this one this battery we got 12.8 volts normal good everything fine everything's fine there this battery we only got 10 volts that means that this battery is probably bad, if I had to guess. If the batteries are bad, that's even worse because first they didn't send me the batteries and then they would have sent me bad batteries. So I don't know. I might reach out to them and see if they'll send me new batteries or something and see maybe maybe, maybe we can do a retest and see if with uh, good batteries, if it will you know perform better. I don't know. I'm very very unhappy with this thing and i definitely for 800 dollars, i definitely would not recommend it thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed it see you in the next one